There are some reflexes that you can use which we tend not to use too much really and what we're looking for is, is it still great? Does it have a heartbeat? Great. In snakes you can use the tongue reflex. You can give basically a very gentle traction on the tongue. It's just showing you now on a, a grass snake here for something different but just showing you the sort of level I suppose of recoil you would get with an anesthetized snake. Obviously in a conscious snake they're not going to let you get anywhere near that. You do have to be cautious using that as a technique because of course um, you do have to worry um, about damaging the tips of the tongue. Temperature obviously is very important as well and this comes back to recovery and induction and, and using drugs generally really. Um, we use continuous recording temperature probes for these um, which I think is the best way of doing it otherwise you, your standard thermometers really won't have the range of temperatures that you would like and of course there's a delay in getting the answer with this in place we're having a continuous readout and as it changes even 0.1 of a degree I'm picking that up as soon as that happens I'm not waiting till it's the next 10 minutes when I'm due to take the temperature so you know these can be placed into the cloaca which works very nice on snakes um, works very nice on lizards uh, obviously you see these are varying temperatures, some better than others for example, but works very, very well. So you're trying to get this temperature really matching their optimal temperatures, so in the sort of high 20s really for the bulk of these throughout anesthesia. And if you're looking at ways of trying to avoid them becoming hypothermic, and we're not really going to delve into too much detail into that today, but if you get that right, you'll see temperatures slowly rise on these patients as you're doing that. And this table, like I say, you can come back and review later. So gas induction is something you can do in the squamates. You can do this by direct intubation or you can do it by mask induction uh, in, in the smaller species as well and this works quite fine. ISO or CV was okay and we maybe discuss the pros and cons of those in, in a minute. But mask induction works fine for these little guys. Um, chameleons are great because they hold on to it for you which makes your life much easier. Um, but we do also use bags, so you can use bags for inducing snakes, for example. The downside of using uh, just a simple plastic bag um, in, in this setup is we've got isofluorine and oxygen in here, is you have to rip the bag open to get the snake out. It's not reusable and you're doing a lot of contamination. Um, so Ziploc bags are better to some extent for these. Uh, and like I say, small lizards, snakes, all we find in these for induction. And all you're really doing is flattening the zip down filling the bag with, with your ISO or sevofluorine and oxygen, zipping up the bag, going away and having a cup of tea for 15, 20 minutes. Um, and you can watch the animal in, within that, you can manipulate it within the bag, you can get a Doppler with it within the bag. And once you've lost your writing reflex completely and you're happy that your patient is becoming anesthetized, I would then suggest you wait five more minutes and then you go for in, intubation. 